Last week about this time, as everybody knows, the church in Texas was experiencing a very different situation than what we have here today. And our heart goes out to those that were impacted by that, to a community, and even just a country and a world that's been touched by that, realizing again that we're not safe anywhere, that the world is indeed a mess. Um, pure evil walked into that place and did what only Satan wants to have done. And Satan, all he does is he lies and he steals and he kills and destroys. And that's what happened last week. And already Satan had robbed a young man of his right mind. And, um, and to be able to go through with something like that is something that can only be devised from the, the enemy of our souls. Even just a couple weeks ago on Halloween Day, on a bike path near, near the World Trade Center in New York City, a truck purposely, intently, went off the road onto a bike path, killing eight people and injuring about a dozen others. It's such a mess. Even in our own backyard just a few weeks ago, we had a very dangerous situation happen at Mattoon High School in the cafeteria that could have ended up in many casualties. And we know that, that it can strike even close to home. Even about that same time a few weeks ago, thousands of people gathered for a concert in Las Vegas, and the shooter um, goes, does his work, sending thousands of people running in different directions, and many of them losing their lives that night. Even in over the past few weeks, um, many people have been able to come out and be able to say how people have used their power and position to rob them of their innocence. And we see evil and we see the mess that that causes in many people's lives as well. We've seen the messes over the last few months of the hurricanes, the flooding, the fires, the earthquakes. So many different things have happened that have caused ruin and a mess to people's lives. And the headlines go on and on. And they happen all around the world at all times. But it seems like we've been hit with a, just a barrage of things lately. It just seems like every other day. There's something big that shocks us, that just about shakes our world as we see the mess that the world is in. Maybe your, whole, maybe your own life has had an earthquake or two recently. Maybe not to the extent of what it's, makes the world headlines, but, but you've had some things that have shaken you. There's things that happen in our own lives that just show us that we live in the midst of a mess. Sometimes the mess is of our own creation. Sometimes it's other people creating a mess for us. Isn't that what happens a lot? If it wasn't for other people creating messes, our life would be pretty good. Sometimes there are messes that are outside of our control. Things that happen to our health and to our circumstances around us. And we know that there is just a big mess all over the place. And so we live in a world that's messy. But today we're going to look at not only the mess, but the message that God wants to give us in the middle of the messes. From the very beginning, the world has been in a mess. Adam and Eve, they kind of created a little bit of a mess, didn't they, when they chose to disobey the Lord, um, who had given them some very simple instructions. And I'm sure that they, many days after it, they wake up every day and say, look, what, look at the mess that we're in now. And their own two children, um, hold on a minute. Okay. Okay, yeah, you're fine, you're fine. I'm sorry. I'm off. Um, my old senior moment here is starting more and more. Um, so anyway, but Adam and Eve, they had two sons. And we know that the mess that was created with those two boys, they got in a fight and one killed the other. And I'm sure Adam and Eve are looking around going, the mess just gets worse and worse, doesn't it? So anyway... It didn't take too long before God regretted even what he had made because the world was evil and wicked. Now, today we're going to look at a lot of passages, and we're going to do so in a sense of doing the, the, uh, the whole responsive reading thing. Um, in your notes, everything that's in bold will be something that you will say aloud when we get to it. It'll be up on the screen, but it'll have a white background. If it's a white background and just black words, that's for you to read. You can either read off your paper or off the screen. If on the screen it's in black, black background, then it's my reading turn, okay? And we're just going to go through these passages together um, as we look at just the mess, but the message that's in the mess. So the first mess that we have is the evil and the wickedness. 
and the fact that Jesus is our ark of safety. So if we look at Genesis chapter 6, you can go ahead and begin here with the Lord. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was greater than earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of heaven. So the mess and the wickedness, the evil in this world, God said, I'm going to build an ark that's a safe place. And anyone who will repent of that will be able to come into that ark. And we know the story, but we know that there were only what? How many people that, that took that message seriously? How many? Yeah, eight. Okay, Noah, his wife, three sons, and their wives. So that adds up to eight. Um, so eight people out of the whole face of the earth, took that message seriously and went into that ark of safety. And Jesus himself is that ark of safety for us because through faith and repentance from our evil and from our wickedness, we're able to enter into that ark of Jesus Christ. Now, centuries later, the world ended up being in another mess because God's people, the nation of Israel, they were slaves in the land of Egypt, which was a pagan land that they had ended up in, and they were in slavery, they were in chains, but the message that came out of that was that Jesus was their delivery, deliverer. Let's read from Exodus chapter 1. I'll start out this time. It says, Pharaoh sent taskmakers over the people to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for Pharaoh cities, Python and Ramses. So they Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every son that is born to the Hebrews, you shall cast into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. Can you imagine that kind of life? I mean, you look at your life every day now, and it's nothing compared to what they had to go through, is it? You know, to be forced into slavery, hard work, and for the government to come along and say, if you have a, if you have a son, we're going we're gonna to kill him. You're not allowed to have sons. I mean, that's a pretty serious instead of messy circumstances that are there. But we continue on reading in Exodus chapter 3. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people are in and have heard their cry because of their past masters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So even though the people were in a messy place, God said, I'm going to bring a deliverer. And that deliverer was through a man whose name was Moses, a man who was already 80 years old, who had grown up in the palace of the king, but ended up being a, an outcast and spending the next 40 years shepherding sheep in the middle of the wilderness. But God said, I'm going to raise you up and make you a deliverer to the people. And through a whole lot of set of circumstances, God fulfilled that promise through Moses and brought those people out of slavery, out of their chains, out of that mess, into the promised land that was promised for them. And so they got out of that mess, they got into the land. Well, generations later, everybody ended up in a big mess again. God's people began to not worship the God who had delivered them, the God who was that ark of safety to them, but they began to worship other gods, gods that were false gods, pagan gods, that their neighbors, the people around them worshipped. And so we read about the prophet Jeremiah, who talked to the people about their mess and to the message that was coming. Let's read this. The city has aroused my anger and wrath. From the day it was built to this day, so that I will remove it from my sight. Their kings and their officials, their priests and their prophets, they have turned to me their back and not their face. And 
They built up the high places of Baal in the valley of the sons of Hinnom to offer up their sons and daughters to Molech, though I did not command them, nor did it even enter into my mind that they should do this abomination. Behold, I will gather them from all the countries to which I drive them in my anger and my wrath and in great indignation. I will bring them back to this place and I will make them dwell in safety and they shall be my people and I will be their God. And I will put the fear of me in their hearts, that they may not turn from me. I will rejoice in doing them good, and I will plant them in this land in faithfulness with all my heart and all my soul. I mean, think about it. The people had left the God that we worship today, that they worshipped at one time, to begin worship the false gods. And even a false god that would require them to bring their babies and sacrifice them in the fire. I mean, that's, that's quite a devotion, isn't it? To give up a child in the fire. I mean, that was the pagan worship of the other gods. And even God's people began to even stoop to that level. And even God said, it never even entered his mind that the people could do that and go that far and commit such abominations. So he said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to restore them. I'm going to be their restorer. They're disobeying, but I'm going to restore them back. Now, they're going to go through a period that's going to be rough because as history shows, God brought the enemies in to conquer them, to devastate their land, to devastate the, the generations of people that were there so that they could humble themselves and realize they needed to turn to God. They weren't going to repent otherwise. Sometimes you've got to learn the hard way, and God's people had to learn the hard way. But God said, I'm not giving up on you. I'm going to restore you and bring you back, and I am going to put in you a new heart, a heart that's going to turn from me and never turn away from me. And that's what God did for his people. So the message was the new heart that was going to be restored. A few centuries went on and people began to not exactly worship wrong gods, but a wrong perception of God. The people at the time were beginning to lose track of that little focus of who God was. And when God came in the form of a person, Jesus, they didn't, they didn't really catch on that that was God. They were looking at something else and missing, missing the point. And when Jesus looked at the people, he said this about them. He saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. He saw that the people were lost and scattered. They just needed somebody to put them back on track again. In other words, like a sheep need to have a shepherd. And so Jesus, as the good shepherd said, I'm going to get them back on track again. I'm going to bring them into the fold. I'm going to protect them and I am going to give them life with me true life and that is what he did for them and gave them a message that not just any life but eternal life and jesus becomes the good shepherd for us when we are lost and scattered the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep and that's what jesus did he laid down his life for each and one every one of us jesus in a messy world becomes an ark of safety I mean, all of us have had evil and wickedness in our lives, and we come into Jesus as that ark. All of us have been in chains and slavery of sin, but Jesus comes along, and he is our deliverer. We've all disobeyed, and our hearts have been far from God, but he comes along and restores our hearts. And we've all been lost and scattered, like those kind of sheep. And we've turned to Jesus as a good shepherd. You know, for all the messes that are going on in this world, and all the messes in our own life. Jesus is the answer. He is all these things and even more. The message 
of our messes. So we come to the ark of safety with our evil and wickedness. We come to the deliverer with our slavery and chains. We come to the restorer with our disobedience. And we come to the shepherd when we're lost and scattered. Jesus says, come home and come and share the Lord. We're going to sing that hymn as we prepare for the communion, as we share together.